I'm Nick Fire and welcome to Ask Pocket. Ask Pocket, of course, is what happens when someone tweets me with a question mark at the end. With that in mind, our first question comes in from this egg. Please die? Wonderful. Jeremy Adler is up next. With all of YouTube's recent decisions regarding flagging, copyright, and suitable content, has there been any trouble with any of Good Game's channels? And if not, are you worried about it at all? Jeremy, we aren't really worried about it because we don't monetize our content, so copyright holders will generally focus on people who are making mad YouTube bank faster and harder than they would us. We also don't use that much copyright content that isn't already cleared under fair use. Although, about 90% of our pocket videos do actually have one copyright strike against them. It's from the ABC, telling us the content we have on our channel is the property of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. So that's stupid. Dr. Jackpot, you're up next! Why yo no like memes, sad face, sad face? Yeah, I got a variation on this question a lot. Heaps of people going, why don't you like memes or puns? And honestly, I debated about actually answering it because I know that the gaming culture loves this sort of stuff and I didn't want to offend anybody, but then, but then I thought, screw it, you guys are made of tougher stuff than that. And also, civil debate gets my juices going. Now, I think I was a little misunderstood on Wednesday's IMO chat. Lots of people think, based off their interpretation of what I said, that I don't enjoy memes and puns. And that is just not true. What does thanks even mean? Just say thanks or f off! This is why you suck at parties. I do not simply not enjoy memes or puns. I think they're actively destroying our discourse, our culture, and probably our brains. To be clear, when I say memes, I'm not just talking about someone taking a picture and captioning it or uploading a GIF. I'm talking Pepe. I'm talking Grumpy Cat. I'm talking Kappa. I'm talking these things that have become shorthand for actual thought. And also, yes, of course, I have laughed at a meme once or twice in my life. Generally, the first time I see something, it's funny because it's fresh and new and I didn't expect that. And that's what comedy is. Comedy is about surprise. But once something enters the zeitgeist, then it loses any element of surprise. It's the same with puns. Puns aren't funny. They're clever. They tick that part of your brain where you go, oh yeah, I see what you did there, but it's not a joke. Which is why whenever someone makes a pun, they go, no man's sky, more like no man's pie. Eh? Am I right? And then they make that face at you, which is the I just made a pun face? Eh? And they say eh. They go eh. And they're like actively trying to remind you to laugh because they're saying like, I just made a joke. And you don't know what to do in that situation. That's why everyone literally responds with eh. And then their face falls and they just go back to talking about whatever they're talking about. Because a pun is just like, it's just a break in the conversation where for some reason we suddenly need to stop talking what we're talking about and engage in this weird social construct where we have to acknowledge what you just did. But it wasn't funny and it wasn't clever and it wasn't original. It was just like, here's a word that sounds like another word. How is that a joke? It's the same with memes. When they're used in discussion online, they're a handbrake on conversation. You can spend an hour writing something coherent and well thought out, and then someone just writes, feels bad, man, and it undercuts everything you're trying to say. Imagine if instead of just recycling all of these jokes, you came up with something new each time. Meaning you would push yourself to not just fall back on a trope, but to rise above it. To add something new to our lives, not just remind us of something someone did once that was funny. To be better than the internet. And if you fill the comments below with memes, then thank you very much for proving my point. If you don't fill the comments below with memes, thank you very much for taking the effort. And remember, as always, send your hate mail to this egg. It's the one and only Nico Double G. Nope. 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 Moving on, and Quebec brings up this point. Why not mention the Pocket Discord at the end of each episode? That place is lit. Quebec is right. The Pocket Discord server is a great place to meet fellow Pocketeers, chat, play games together, and get lit. There's a link in the description below. Go lit it up. Captain Quacker is next. Nikki, which video game characters, or any fictional characters, have influenced you as a person? 
Quaker, I don't think there's any video game characters that have influenced my life, otherwise I'd be in prison for having killed several thousand people, or just prison because I have spent a lifetime crushing beautiful little baby turtles under my murderous plumber foot. But there are two fictional characters that have influenced my life. They're Calvin and Hobbes. I grew up reading Calvin and Hobbes and they are a huge part of what makes me the man I am today. The comics are from the perspective of a child and along with the sense of wonder and fun Calvin has, they often deal with bigger ideas about morality or death or love, all while assuring the reader the world is a better place if you make it that way. They remind me to always stay a child at heart. They are beautiful, hilarious and entirely void of meme. I love them so much I got them tattooed into my skin which is such a Calvin thing to do. Moving on, and Cherry Seven Heart has our final question. If you were stuck on a deserted island, which pocketeer would you have with you to survive? Oh, Cherry, I don't know, just one? I mean, I guess my instincts say I need someone who can provide me with food. So that's either a good hunter or someone who's happy to feed men grapes or someone who is in themselves good eaten. But then there's so much more to consider. Structure building, entertainment, companionship, someone who's willing to be sent out to sea with a note up their bum, like some sort of human message in a bottle. There's just so many factors to consider and I don't know enough of you well enough. So I need you to apply for the gig. Let me know in the comments below, write up a little desert job application, whack it in the comments and I'll go through them all and, and pick the best one. And next week's Ask Pocket, I'll announce the lucky butthole. All right, that's it for today's episode of Ask Pocket. Get my pocket tears, Nick, bye out! Hopefully they can bond over their shared enthusiasm for threats and work something out. Moving on, and the Oculus Conference had a delightful amount of Palmer Lucky. None. <laughs>